Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great beginning to this Thursday. Um, you know, thank you again uh, from the bottom of my heart for praying for me, getting better every day. Um, hopefully, this will be the last you know weekend. I'll have to be sitting on a chair or stool, but uh, excited to continue on this journey of uh, uncommon. First Corinthians, that's what we're doing on Thursday night as well as on Sunday. want to also remind you of Family Feast. So uh, if you're going to be out of town, especially, you know, inc- invite, encourage, you know, people to come, you know, to uh, tonight. Family Feast is 530 to 630 and then services are 630 to 730. So I would love to have you there, you know, in case that's an option. Otherwise, I'll see you on Sunday um, on site or online. With that being said, we are jumping now into, into Isaiah chapter 45. You know, Isaiah chapter 45, and this is what it says. In fact, this is how it starts. This is what the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed one, whose right hand he will empower. Before him, mighty kings will be paralyzed with fear. Their fortress gates will be opened, never to shut again. This is what the Lord says. I will go before you, Cyrus, and level the mountains. I will smash down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron, and I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, darkness, uh, secret riches. I will do this so you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who uh, is the one who calls you by name. And so what I love is that God is calling him by name. uh, And he's specifically calling Cyrus. And and this message, you know, uh, to Cyrus specifically, you know, says is is told us uh, in other books outside the Bible about this character, about this leader called Cyrus. And Josephus, you know, in Antiquities, I think it's number eleven five, cited in Grogon. These things Cyrus knew from reading the book of prophecy, which Isaiah had left behind two hundred and ten years earlier. So two hundred and ten years earlier, this is what was prophesied. Cyrus reads it and understands this is the call that God has on his life. I absolutely love that picture. Uh, Then he says, um, uh, he's going to be calling calling him by name. Uh, What I love about this is, is, let me give you some history under this that I found this morning. The armies of the Medes and the Persians under Cyrus conquered the city of Babylon in a remarkable way that you can actually read about in Daniel chapter 5. According to the ancient ancient historian Herodotus, while King Belshazzar of Babylon held a reckless party, Cyrus conquered the city by diverting the flow of the Euphrates River into a nearby swamp, thus lowering the level of the river so his troops could march through the water and under the river gates. But they still would not have been able to enter had not the bronze gates of the inner walls been left inexplicably unlocked. God opened the gates of the city of Babylon for Cyrus and put it in writing 200 years before it actually happened. I will smash down the gates of bronze and I will cut through the bars of iron. I will level the mountains. In fact, in October of 539 BC, Cyrus advanced in the lower Mesopotamia and leaving Babylon to last, conquered and occupied by the surrounding territory. Seen the way in which the wind was blowing, the current leader of Babylon deserted the this, this city, leaving it to his son, Belshazzar, and taking to Babylon was bloodless and effortless. How do I know? Daniel chapter 5. So the royal proclamations of Cyrus fulfilling this prophecy are also found in Ezra chapter 1 verse 2 and Second Chronicles chapter 36 verse 23. I love that God is saying, look, I am in control okay i am in control we might feel out of control we might think that the world is out of control but yet there is always one who is in control let's continue to read for that framework and why have i called you for this work cyrus why did i call you by name when you did not know me since this was 200 years ahead of time it is for the sake of jacob my servant israel my chosen one. So lest you not think that this is because of your power, your might, your influence, your experience, I'm the one that's actually doing this. I am the Lord. There is no other God. I have equipped you for battle, though you don't even know me. So all the world from the east and the west will know that there is no other God. I am the Lord, 
and there is no other. Sense in a theme? You know, uh, I create the light and make the darkness. I send good times and bad times. I, the Lord, and the one who does these things. So simply put, Isaiah knows that Cyrus is going to declare to the whole world, you know, and that we should know today that God is in control. And so God, this prophecy was given long before the people went into captivity in Israel. You know, and now, and now Isaiah is now announcing that when that happens, there's, they can hold on and be comforted through the captivity because they know that what? God is in control. When God does great and miraculous things, it's very easy, isn't it, for us to believe that he is in control. When times are hard and the trials are heavy, that's when we need to believe it all the more, that God is in control. And you can continue to go on, you know, the rest of the chapter. I want you to kind of read through about, you know, how he kind of walks through and again puts down these idols and different folks and he's going to go after, you know, the Gentiles. I do want to jump in to verse 22. Let all the world look for me for salvation, for I am God, there is no other. I have sworn by my own name, verse 23, I have spoken the truth and I will never go back on my word. Every knee will bow to me. And every tongue will confess to me, you know, and I could fill in the blank that Jesus Christ is Lord. Notice how Jesus used that same phrase. Paul used that same phrase, you know, in Philippians as well, chapter two. The people will declare the Lord is the source of all my righteousness and strength. All who are angry with him will now come to be ashamed in the Lord. All generations of Israel will be justified and in, in him they will boast. So what he's saying is a look to me. Be saved, all of you in the earth, because remember, I am in control. So let me just ask you this question. What part are you struggling to see the end? What part are you trying to control that's really outside of your control, which is actually most things in our lives? What part can you say, God, I'm suffering, I'm doing or I'm doing well, and I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to entrust myself to you because I know that you are in control. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for the word that you spoke through Isaiah 210 years before Cyrus was even born. And I pray, Father, that we would have that same mindset, that same encouragement, that same hope in whatever we might be facing, that you are in control. And with a God is in control, we can put our trust in you. So we love you and thank you for today, for that's all that we are guaranteed and that's all we have. So help us to trust in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, thanks again, you know, for joining today and I uh, hope this is an encouragement for you. Yep, you can see my dog Marley. There she is, you know, behind, you know, just uh, just being a good puppy. And uh, uh, I hope you do have a great day and I hope to see you tonight or this weekend. Love you guys.